Center Pharmacy is uh, practice usually with some type of a, a partner in rural or in the community setting that provides comprehensive care, oftentimes to patients that are underserved and underinsured. Uh, but it's a mix. I would say about a third of the patients do have insurance. About a third have some form of federally subsidized insurance like Medicare or Medicaid. And then a third are uninsured. So it's a very rewarding career path. Uh, they essentially you get to see patients that have a lot of social determinants of health, barriers to optimum care, and you can make a huge impact. So by developing trust with the patient, finding out what their struggles are, what their barriers are, you become a problem solver. And so I work with an interprofessional team, which is also very rewarding because I can supplement their understanding of the medication and the choices and uh, provide a lot of benefit, not only to the team, but ultimately to the patient. So it starts out, we usually uh, have a huddle uh, starting out. Oh, okay, sure, sure, gotcha. So a typical day usually starts out at eight o'clock in the morning uh, with a huddle of the entire team. We discuss uh, what our day is going to look like, each provider, what their schedule is going to be, and any announcements that the administration has for the teams, and what rooms we're going to be seeing our patients in. After that, we see patients all day long. And oftentimes for me, I'm going to be flexible in my schedule. We're going to have anywhere between 10 and 20 patients on the schedule for the day. And then also I'm going to have providers coming in and saying, hey, I've got this really challenging patient. Can you help us out? Can you teach them how to start the insulin therapy? Or can you give us some advice on what therapy would be the best choice for them? And so I'm a diabetes expert as well, and that's what my focus is on the team. But I can cover any topic um, or medication question that's based in ambulatory care. So hypertension, dyslipidemia, atrial fibrillation, heart failure, past heart attack, history. I'm gonna be able to provide the best evidence-based medicine answers for my providers and also for my patients. So we, we usually get a little break at lunchtime, but we're usually writing our notes up while we're eating, and then we're finishing out the day, finish up about five o'clock. So it's a full day. So telehealth is, is a, a tool that we can use to enhance access to care for our patients. So oftentimes patients have challenges with getting to the clinic. And if they have a smartphone or if they have computer access at home, we can connect with them and enable greater access to experts. And so it, it enhances their ability to touch base and our ability to touch base with them. They can ask us questions. And, it, and it's, um, it's kind of interesting from a pharmacy perspective because oftentimes we're asking them, what do you take? And how do you take it? And what is that for? And what over-the-counter medicines are you taking? And there's been opportunities in telehealth where they've actually been able to show us the bottle or they'll go to their medicine cabinet and go, oh yeah, I'm taking this herbal. And they're like, what herbal is it? And it's like, I don't know, it's for my diabetes. It says it's for my sugar. And so I'll say, hey, can you grab it? And they'll actually grab it and show it to me on the camera. And I'm able to actually see it and be like, hey, that's a great idea. Or, oh, I'm a little bit concerned about that. 
So uh, telehealth is, is especially for, for patients that have um, barriers to health, social determinants of health, they have transportation problems. Uh, it really enhances our ability to connect with those patients and reach out to them and, and meet them on their terms and in their ability. So um, I would say it improves quality care and it's, it's an extra tool. It doesn't replace care for them to come into the clinic, but it supplements care quite nicely. So somebody that's interested in this particular career pathway, advice that I would give them is to get experience with it. See if you can shadow. Um, I often will have several different requests and I not only cover the primary site, but I also cover other free medical clinics. And oftentimes there's opportunities where they could go out and help out with the food bank or help out even in the, the practice setting. You can get volunteer activities where you're checking people in and seeing how the team operates. So as much experience as you can get in that setting, I would say go for it.